All right, we're back. Another edition live from Red Hook here at the Function House. And tonight we have a very special guest, DJ. DJ Stimulus, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Please, Came in please, on short please. notice, man, like Mariano. That's it. <laughs> Came in. Out of the Thank bullpen. <laughs> so very appreciative of you coming down uh, like that. Uh, and we're happy to have you on the show. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me here. You're the first DJ from Flatbush on the show. For real? Yeah. It's not that far away. But, but you're from Berlin, so I don't know. <laughs> Five years in Berlin from Flatbush. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. I live in Berlin. I don't think the Berliners will let me claim it in just five years. <laughs> You're doing some work out there, though. You never know. Yeah, yeah. you never know. You never know. I, actually, when I get back, or, or for the Berliners watching, just uh, type in the comments how many years it takes to be called an official Berliner. And we'll read it later and find <laughs> out. <laughs> so Berlin, man, I mean, how, how, did, how did that come about? You know what? Um, like... Uh, me, me and my, my boy Malik Work, we were in a band here and we were always traveling around. And uh, when we first started being able to go to Europe and Brazil and all over the place, I was like, man, I want to leave America. You know, I was like, I definitely want to leave. And so I just started kind of floating around, like going to different countries. And um, I got to the point where it was like, all right, it's either going to be Buenos Aires or, or Berlin. Um, and what cities just had like great vibe, great energy, and actually opportunities for me. Um, and I ended up settling on Berlin, and I'm really happy with the choice. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not an easy thing to do, to just pick up and move to another country, yeah. let alone move to like another state. I mean, but he's got some experience because he lived in Japan for a while. Okay, okay. I can never live there full time, though. But yeah. I mean, my man is living there full time right now. He just did three years there. Um, I don't know, moving to a different place could be a little difficult. I'm sure you had your ups and downs in Berlin. Yeah, I've had my ups and downs. Like, what do you, all right, so what do you love about Berlin? What do you hate about Berlin? Okay, one of the things I love um, about Berlin is like uh, is the quiet and the time, you know what I mean? Like uh, the German culture has a respect for you know, honing your craft and taking your time. You know, like, you can concentrate. You guys know, we're New Yorkers. It's really hard to try to think about one thing here. You know, I almost, and I feel like ask the day him, moves fast here. The day moves fast here. The day is nice and slow there. So, like, you get a lot done in a day Adderall, in Berlin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ad Adderall in Berlin will turn one day into five. You know what I mean? Like, easily. And like, if I have to pick something I hate, I would just say it's the inconsistency in weather. You know, so, so just so you guys understand like why I'm always back home every July. So my first year in Berlin, you know, we're chilling. I'm enjoying the, the fact that May and June, we already have like 18 hours of sunlight. I'm like, ah, oh, this is amazing, but it's not that warm. And so it's getting like, like late June and I finally work up the balls to ask my, my friend, I'm like, so when's the part where it just gets hot and stays hot? Like, you know, the summer season it is. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't have that. We have like wow. 20 max 30 random great days and they don't necessarily come in a row during the summer season. Really? And so it's up and down. Like you'll have a great 85 degrees sunny and then it'll rain three days. And then you'll get two days in a row, like maybe sun, but it's kind of cold or warm and gray. So it's, you don't have this consistency like we have here. That's the You know, once the summer starts here, you're like, I'm good till the fall. Like you don't have to change your outfit. Yeah, yeah. There it's like every morning, you're like what's going on? Well, you, you've definitely come during a heat wave because we've had the last couple of weeks has been like extremely hot and humid here, so. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's either people move to a place that's hot or they like the cold, they'll move to a place that's cold. You move to a place where it's all over the place. I mean, I moved for the music. I, I moved, I moved. I, didn't, I don't pick places by weather. I just, I just pick by opportunities. And the music's dope, the scene is dope, people are really nice. It's a cosmopolitan city, and so that's, that's really why I moved. It's like, a, it's like a city version of Brooklyn. I used to call it Berliniumsburg when I first got there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the population is slightly smaller than just our borough. So it's, it's like, if Brooklyn, I mean, Brooklyn could be a city easily. 
So it's like, you know. How did you, um, how did you break into the DJ scene out there? Um, what was it? Uh, I had this booking in Hamburg um, with these guys, uh, Soto Sounds. Shout out Soto Sounds. Um, because I noticed they were booking a lot of Brooklyn cats, like Ayers from the, you know, Ayers and Joe Eleven from the Rub were playing there, Sammy Bananas, and I was like, okay, you guys got the, like the whole Brooklyn flow going, and so I went there, um, and that was my first booking was in Hamburg. And funny enough, before I went out for that booking, I was partying here in New York, and I met this guy from Stuttgart, who's, who's still my good friend. His name is Jens, and he was partying here. We just took him around with us. Like I was DJing at Butter and at Thompson. We just rolled around. He's like, yo, if you ever come to Germany, come check me in Stuttgart. So I was like, all right, bet. So I had this Hamburg gig, and then I had a couple of days off, and I went down to Stuttgart, which is in South Germany, to hang out with him. And down there, I just met all these talented cats, like uh, DJ Chauvy, DJ Passion, AKA Nine Toes, DJ Batman, Enon, and like, and I was just like, yo, there's so much talent here. And they were taking me around the studios and giving me the whole history of hip hop and dance music in Germany and how much of it came from the South and the crossover with the fact that Stuttgart is near a big American military base and how that cross pollination is kind of what started the hip hop scene there and how, and then the Stuttgart people just migrated all over the country. And so from there, I understood why people were going to Berlin. And from there, I went up to Berlin, which is where, like, I mean, there's so many people from Brooklyn up there. And so then I got up to Berlin. It was like all my friends from Brooklyn were like, all right, yo, we're here. And da, da, da. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I have, I've had friends from Munich be like, yo, what's up with you Brooklyn people? How come you know everyone? And it was just like, yeah, it's just kind of like, there's a lot of Brooklyn and New York Brooklyn's people. Brooklyn is the bomb. Yeah, Brooklyn is the bomb, the planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why everybody's been migrating. <laughs> so originally you were a rapper. Yes. And, and that's how you got into the whole DJ scene. Yes. So let's talk about how that all happened. Um, I mean, I'm still a rapper. I still, I still make songs. I still put songs out. Um, and I guess like DJing is like the foundation for that or like what pays all my rapper bills. Um, and I just got into it because like, Actually, you know what, before I even started rapping, like one of my first gifts from my mom when I was like five or something was like the Fisher Price turntable with a couple of pieces of vinyl. And my mom always played vinyl. So I just grew up in a musical household and it was like when it's Saturday, Sunday time to clean the house. It was like, put on records, do your chores. And so I already, I had already gotten into records in I that way. That for sure. I think yeah. I had one of those. It was like a little brown suitcase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. That. And so that's how it started. And like, and like, because of that, that whole vinyl vibe, you know, I was just into the idea of playing what I wanted to hear when I wanted to hear it, rather than only listening to the radio and just being force fed whatever someone wanted me to hear. Um, and that's kind of how it started. And then I was rapping all the time and you had to have a DJ. And then I was like, yo, you know, in the off time, I was like, yo, show me what you're doing. How's it work, et cetera, et cetera. And that just kind of took now off. you're your me. own DJ. Now I'm my own DJ. <laughs> one man band. <laughs> the one man band. What, when it has to be like that, you know, when, when I have my choice out in Berlin, shout out to my man DJ Boogie Dan, really dope turntablist and dope DJ, and he backs me up when I want to stay. So who's your, need... who's your favorite rapper? My favorite rapper, wow. I only get one? I'll give you three. Give me three. You'll give me three. All right. If I get three, I'm going to say, I always have to stick with people who influence me a lot. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give a Rock Him in there. Like Super Brooklyn. I got to go like Big Daddy Kane. Well, some old school guys. Super old school. And then if I jump fast forward all the way to modern era, I'll throw Kendrick in there. Wow. wow. I, had, I had three totally different <laughs> rappers yeah. I, I thought for sure you were going to say Biggie. You know what? Like, I have respect for Biggie, and I like him. Um, but I'm just into, like, intellectual stuff. I'm really into, like, complicated lyrics. And, like, Biggie definitely had, like, the ill flow, right? Like, where, like, um, he always had a dope first line of the song. And his flow was interesting because his A-Bs weren't on like the first bar, like if you're getting real nerdy, right? Like his rhymes were like mid-bar and that's what always kept his flow going. It wasn't like this, da, 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 
like he was always in the middle and so you never you can anticipate what was coming but it didn't always land in the same place and that's why he just had that rhythm and that movement which was dope but you know unfortunately he had a very short career yep. and as much as i liked him he didn't influence me like that but you know like growing up in bedstock it's like big daddy kane's a huge influence in the whole family tree of Brooklyn rappers. Yeah. I mean, Jay-Z will tell you himself, that he's just a descendant of Big Daddy Kane. Biggie was a descendant of Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane was the original, like, I do pop, I do street, I could battle you, I could do a dance record, and I got the fly juke, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. he's the prototype Brooklyn MC, like, every Brooklyn MC after him has been a version of Big Daddy Kane, like, maybe, 20 years from now, they'll think they're versions of Biggie or Jay-Z, which is fine. But either one of them will tell you, like, yo, it's Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> so you're in town for how long? What exactly are you doing here? What gigs are you playing? Uh, I'm here DJing for a while. I'm in town until Monday. Um, I have some really cool gigs coming up. Like, tomorrow night, um, I'll be at uh, Beauty in Essex in the early part of the night, late night at Pianos, which is always fun with my boy DJ Ism. Uh, another Brooklyn night. Uh, Friday night should be really good time at a place called Louie and Chan. Downtown's a really cool party called Shapes. And I'm playing my homie DJ Moma, who you guys know, of course. Um, then Saturday, Moma and I play together again at Everyday People down at the Watermark. And then Saturday night, I'm at Vandal. Um, and so that's it. And then I can't forget another radio show Friday morning. I'm on Sway in the morning, drop a little set. And, yeah. Nice, very good. So you're busy. Yeah, man. And then back to Berlin. What do you got lined up in Berlin? What are your parties that you do in Berlin? In Berlin, my main party right now is a party called Swim Good. And um, I also have a radio show called Swim Good, which is on Boom FM every Wednesday night. It's the first 24-hour hip-hop station in Germany, um, which is cool because I concentrate on, like, very new and um, underground music. Like, I play a ton of Brooklyn stuff and especially, like, really young New Brooklyn stuff like Underachievers, Flapper Zombies, Jimmy Tents, Nick Caution, Joey Beck. Like I keep it extra Brooklyn up my show. <laughs> so are you searching for all this music or are like people sending you? I search. So I'm, you, so I'm on like a computer digger. all day long. I'm on the computer What's all like, where day. Are you, where are your go-to uh, portals that you're getting music from or are you just all over? I'm all over, but I'm, I've always been a big SoundCloud uh, fan. Hopefully they don't shut down in 40 whatever days or <laughs> whatever this ticking, ticking clock is. Uh, I've, um, I've come to like Spotify because thanks to the way like digital distribution has opened up, a lot of artists are able to put stuff on Spotify. Um, I'm a big fan of Bandcamp just because of the quality of the files you could get from it as a DJ. You know, like, you know, like that's the only thing that annoys me about iTunes is like even if I want to, I can't buy a high quality file you know from the artist and so and then after that it's just blogs or whatever and you just find stuff so how much time do you find yourself spending in searching for music and downloading music and putting music together for when you're playing on your sets um i would say i spend a good on a s minimum six hours a week usually closer to eight to ten because I play a lot of different kinds of parties and I have a radio show, so you gotta put the time in. So it's very time consuming, but I love music, so it's all good. So <laughs> like your, your gigs are mostly open format gigs? Yeah. And then your radio show is strictly hip hop? Yeah, it's, I do hip hop and future beats. I do hip hop and future beats. And, and, and to keep it, keep it 100, keep it buck, like the open format thing isn't as big in Germany. You know, they're, they're really quite genre specific. Um, and that's one of the things I miss so much about New York and, and our crowds out here and our musical knowledge. I mean, you get touches of that if you go to London, like people know how to vibe out and go, hey, I don't mind one DJ giving me house, reggae, you know, disco, funk, brand new ratchet stuff, old school, whatever. And eh, Germany's not really like that. But. So your party, what's it called? Swim? Swim Good. So Swim Good, what's the, what's the music like in Swim Good? Swim Good, what we always do is we start off with new talent. So we have two to three live artists every night and they just do three songs and we find underground artists who are based in the city. 
Um, and actually, we've, we've actually tried to focus on female talent just because there's just like tons of guys that get opportunities. Um, so that's how the night starts. And then we tend to work with DJ producers. And the main rule is kind of similar to what you guys have here. Play whatever you want. Just play what you love. You know, we'll take on getting the crowd in the room, getting them hyped up, and you play what you love. So we've had people who come from a hip hop background dropping techno sets and people doing future beats or footwork or, you know, we just had this guy doing like full on like Memphis hardcore, like 90s style hip hop mixed up with like, you know, the kind of stuff coming out of Dade County with Triple X Ascension and all that kind of stuff. So we just let people be free. And people appreciate it over there. Yeah, people appreciate it. Yeah. People definitely appreciate so it. So people are coming, at least the crowd that are coming to the party, they're coming with an open mind to just know that this is a music party and they come for the experience. Yeah, and if they don't come with an open mind, they get scared really fast. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, you guys are really going left. And it's like, <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so, so Berlin, Flatbush to Berlin, you're here at the Function House. You have something special planned that you're gonna play? Um, yes, uh, I'll call it. Yeah, it's special. It's special. Uh, I guess the most special part about it, it's been a long time since I've done the one man show thing because I want to play some of my own songs. So I figure I'll just actually perform them and rap them out and DJ at the same time. And then after that, I'm really just gonna stare at you guys. Really, you know, like like you said, it was last minute. So I just kind of want to, you know introduce myself to you guys via the music, see what gets your heads nodding, and, and just see what lanes we could, we could go down, you know? That's dope. Well, <laughs> thank you for coming down on such short notice, and we're happy to hear, have you here, and do your thing, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank we're going to take a two-minute break, to, uh, and we're going to get him up on the decks. Peace. Wow.